What's going on guys, Yune Gaming back with another MLB The Show 21 video. And in this video, we are going to be grading the monthly awards program. I did this with April, and I plan to do this throughout the rest of the year. So this is the May version. Marcus Simeon is the Lightning. We're gonna, I'm gonna give you all my thoughts on all the cards in the entire program in general. So let's get right into it. Starting things off, I think I'm gonna grade the difficulty of these missions and moments. Super easy. Like most of these moments are really easy. They didn't take me that long. The missions were also really easy to complete and play versus CPU. So with all this, uh, you do your top now from other weeks and you've easily got this in the bag. And I think this took me about two hours ish to complete. And like, I think that's including some breaks. So about two hours ish, it took me to complete this. And it, it honestly wasn't that difficult. I didn't have struggles with really anything. So it is super easy to complete and has some really good rewards. Starting things off is these 88 Austin Meadows you get for five points in the program. For the first one in the program, this is an, actually a very solid card. 115 power versus righties is a stat that stands out. Of course, he has low vision, not the best contact numbers, not great tag and slap these, but not a bad card to start things off. I think I'm going to give this a B plus because, I mean, it's not like the best, but it's also the lowest overall card in the program. So I can't dock it too hard for that, but it is a good card. It's a pretty good 88. I'm not going to lie. It's a great hitter card. This is, will be a solid bench bat, especially if you like awesome Meadows swing. Moving on, we have this choice pack for the first missions and moments. You can get this, all these guys. Next, we have a thousand subs. And then our second player is 89 Jesse Winker. I'm going to have to give this a D, not because of the card. I don't think the card is bad. I just think Jesse Winker should have gotten like like a 91 or a 93 or something. I feel like he should have gotten way better for the good month he had. I feel like he should have gotten more appreciation for that. Fielding, of course, is going to be terrible with Winker, but he's in there for his bat. And I'm pretty sure that his stats versus righties are better on his live series than there are on his 89. I'm actually going to go and check that. I think they're the exact same. 106.95 on the live series, and if we go to the player of the month, it's 196. So actually... The player, the live series is actually better, but this card is way better stats against lefties and better vision, of course. But I honestly think it's a bit underwhelming that we didn't get a better Jesse Winker, so for that, I'm going to have to give it a D. Moving on next, we have this 90 overall Brandon Crawford, and in the moment that you had, you have to total 11 total bases. I got 14 in a game. Like, I got went 4-5 for five with a single and three home runs, so... This card is kind of glitchy, I'm not going to lie. This is, would be one of the best second basemen in the game if you choose to put him there. He's got great stats against right. He's really low contact against lefties, but pretty good power against them as well with low vision. That's a lot of these player of the month cards. Like They have really good power versus righties, I feel like a lot of them do. Bad, not the best fielding and low contact. I don't know, in low vision, like, that's just kind of how they are. And I feel like that's kind of how a player of the month is just going to be because they're, like, based on players in this year and a lot of players this year are like strikeout machines so i don't know like brandon Crawford, i think this is a good card obviously not the best i think i'm gonna give it a b now it's not spectacular but i'm just gonna give it a b not a b plus just a normal b it's pretty good but obviously not the best in the world 91 ryan tapera this is gonna be an interesting card because this card can play good but I'm honestly not sure about it. Cutter, two-seamer, four-seamer slider, changeup. Not a bad pitch mix. He has three fastballs, and it's four-seamer and two-seamer for two of them. So, like, that isn't great, but he does have the cutter. And I feel like this is going to be a good reliever, one of the best uh, free relievers in the game, and should help out a lot of bullpens. I don't, the cutter only coming at 88 is a little bit concerning, but he does have good control, good home runs per nine, good walks and hits per case per nine. So the PCI will be small against him. I don't know. This card is going to be interesting. I'm going to give it a B- minus because I'm a little underwhelming on the pitch mix, but you never know. This card could always play above the attributes, play above the pitch velocities in the right corner, and maybe surprise me a bit. You never know. Next, we have this 91 Ramon Laureano, and this is a little bit of an interesting card. I'm not going to lie. 49-125 contact with 105 and 85 power. 49 and 125 contact like what that's insane that is weird and also he's 46 vision that is terrible he also has 85 fielding which i think is a bit a little bit low for ramon Laureano. but if you do give him the max to parallel five he will have diamond fielding 
and he has 99 arm strength, of course, with 99 arm accuracy. He has a hose out there in the outfield with 65 speed. I'm honestly not sure about this card. I, I don't I don't think he's good. I don't think he's great. I don't think he's bad. We're going to give him a C plus because just because of that vision and contact, because you don't have a right, you're going with him against a righty and you're on anything above all-star, you're, you're not going to get a hit. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard to get a hit with that low of contact and that low of vision. So I'm honestly not sure. It's kind of like a Joey Gallo versus righties and then quite the opposite versus lefties. I'm honestly not sure what to think about this card. So I'm going to give it a C plus. The fielding is obviously great, but the hitting, we'll see. It'll be interesting. Next, we got 92 Corey Kluber. Now, he was kind of had to get this card because they didn't give him a no-hitter one. So uh, a lot of people saw this 92 Corey Kluber coming. But Corey Kluber last year, he, he was a 99. He wasn't as good as this, but he was an absolute beast. Came out day one and stayed in most people's rotation throughout the end of the year. He's got good stamina, good hits in case per nine, pretty good 92 control. So if you're good with pinpoint, he's going to dot up corners. Of course, sinker, cutter, slur, four seamer, change, a great pitch mix, great break. Uh, I feel like this Cooper card does have some potential in a lot of people's rotations because he might play above his attributes kind of like he did last year he might be that god god card like he was last year and he's just going to be a good pitcher to face i'm going to give this our first a i think it's going to be an a minus because i'm not sure if he's going to be as glitchy as he was last year but Corey kluber a minus got to give it up like this card is going to be good if you're he just was good last year so i don't see it being anything up but good this year next we got this 93 jose abreu and i did not see this coming that's for sure so first base the fielding stats don't matter too much he's got 46 speed the hitting is once again interesting 116 81 contact with 82 and 115 power so against righties he's gonna have better contact and against lefties he's gonna have better power so that's a bit interesting the vision's a little bit low, which, I mean, isn't incredible, but what you're going to do about it, honestly, I'm really interested to see how this car plays, and Jose Abreu, I don't really know how to feel about it, I haven't used him that much, I mean, I don't know if 125 clutch makes that big of a difference, but he obviously is maxed out clutch, I'm going to give him a B plus. I don't think it's great, I don't think it's terrible, but I do think it's a bit above average, uh, of a card and I think I completed his mission pretty easily so we'll see how he plays in a difficult in like all I feel like this is a great all-star first baseman but I still think Vlad from last player of the month is better than he is so we got 94 Zach Wheeler I think this card I'm also going to give this card an A minus similar to Corey Kluber because he's got a four seamer slider sinker curveball change up now this is going to be interesting he does not have outlier he has 101 stamina, 92 hits per nine, 82 Ks per nine, 86 control, really low pitching clutch. He has 99 VLO and 97 break. I'm honestly not sure how this card is going to play. I think he does have some not bad hitting stats against righties. He does. They aren't terrible, at least. But I'm honestly not sure how this card is going to play. It could either be really good or it can be very easy and predictable. But I feel like it does have the good potential to be good. And if you know what you're how to pitch with Zach Wheeler. This is going to be a great rotation piece. I'm going to obviously try him out, see how he plays, but I'm going to give it a minus just for that fact. Um, honestly, there isn't too much to talk about with the Zach Wheeler card. He's not bad. He's pretty good. And if you know how to pitch with him, he's going to be filthy. One thing to bring up before we get to the lightning card, to talk about Marcus Simeon is that at 90 points, you get this 42 series pack, which is great because two days ago, these cards were going for 100k on the market. Now they're going for only 30k, which yes, it's still expensive. But if you're trying to get that Jackie Robinson card, the 99, it's much more obtainable than spending a, a million stubs to get all these cards. Anyway, looking at the 96 Marcus Simeon card, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of underwhelmed. Like the fielding, I think is pretty good for second base. It'll obviously get the job done. Parallel two, he's gonna get a diamond fielder. He has also 73 speed. But once again, the hitting with a lot of these cards, it's kind of interesting. 125 contact versus righty. So the PCI will be manageable on um, on the higher difficulties, but he only has 57 vision, which is a bit of a blow. 
and it's gonna be hard for anyone on a Hall of Fame or above to really be able to like put good swings on the ball, especially when he's facing a lefty, because he has 88 and 108 against lefties. His car's gonna obviously be, be better against righties, but I'm honestly not sure how his car is gonna play. Uh, I really do wanna, I'm excited to try him out. Haven't heard a lot of reviews about him and how he plays, but who knows, could be really glitchy and play above the attributes and the vision could be manageable. But I don't know. I'm going to give this car to B. I don't think it's the best Lightning. I still think Buxton is better. But with the cap and some of the guys we're getting from Team Affinity, I think there's guys that are challenging Simeon a little bit more than there are guys challenging Buxton. So I'm going to have to give this Simeon car to B. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below of the main monthly awards. Didn't bring this up earlier, but you'll see in the beginning screen. We are trying to get to 400 subs by the end of June. If we get there, I will do a face reveal. So that is how that's going to work. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Anyway, let me know your thoughts about this in the comments below. Let me know if I'm wrong, if I'm an idiot, and if there's anything else you want me to talk about for the June monthly awards. Anyway, I'm UN Gaming. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thanks for watching.